Hello and welcome. I'm Kate. Ad free versions and subtitles are available. The outside world was darkening. Growing food was moving mostly indoors. The focus otherwise shifted to preservation. I switched to indoor tasks and I had put off enough of them to fill a book. 136. Catching up indoors. September 27, 2024. With too few harvests from the garden to keep us fed, I had signed up for the local produce box again. During the semester, I drive past the farm regularly and pick up produce as needed. During the semester break, they deliver a weekly assortment of fresh local produce. We'd gotten a lot of pak choy and celeriac root. All I remembered about the latter was that I didn't like it. I was determined to give it another try though. It had been years since I last tried. So I'd asked on Mastodon if people had recommendations for the root. They did, many of which sounded delicious. With the sudden cold temperatures, we were especially drawn to a soup someone suggested. So I chopped up vegetables for vegetable soup for dinner while making lunch. I often deal with multiple things at once in the kitchen, especially challenging in a tiny space. I like getting lost in the kitchen. My thoughts or a good audiobook and just go with the flow of the kitchen. I sauteed the veggies, then added some flour. I hadn't made soup in quite a while. But following a handful of recipes and improvising a bit led to deliciously creamy soup. The next day. Over the past weeks, I'd saved and dried various seeds from the garden. It was time to sort and store them. Because we'd had to harvest the beans wet, we decided to dry them at a low temperature in the dehydrator. The Brunhilde I'd shelled the night I'd harvested them. That was the better choice. Shelling them fresh was definitely easier. It took a while to shell the much smaller amount of Neckerkönigin beans. These giant bins are for our cover crops, in this case the field beans. They come in large bags, so I store some. Some of the seeds I'd save would go to my mom and a friend. The rest went into my seed storage for next year. I'd fermented the tomato seeds before drying. I couldn't get them off the kitchen paper, but that's okay. I'll deal with it in spring when I want to plant them. I had to get these into the little storage bottle. I'll also have to find out what they are, as I'd only labeled them by their shape. A heart. Some seeds had gotten stuck to the glass lids, but they were still fully dry, so I added them despite their stickiness. I took some kaiwa seeds out of storage to send along with the safe seeds. Kaiwa is not well known here. Next summer, it will hopefully grow in two more gardens in southern Germany. We didn't have much success with melons this year. Two tiny watermelons and a single cantaloupe were the result. But the fruit had held plenty of seed to give away some and save a lot for next year. The syrup I'd made last episode had finished infusing, so I bottled it for canning. The canner was on the floor anyway. As soon as I could take out the potatoes, the syrup would go in. The canner ran a lot this fall. During my evening stroll through the garden, I spotted these peppers putting on very late flowers. 
it was almost time to move them to the greenhouse for winter protection. The next day. I kept finding more tasks that weren't even on the list. To have the wooden utensils last longer, I treat them with hemp oil on a semi-regular basis. I do the same to the countertop of the kitchen island. I've been slowly chipping away at the million things I haven't done, but today's big projects are going to be goulash for dinner and getting the tomatoes preserved. And if I have time, I'm also going to take care of the apples, but that's an optional one because they could do with another day or two. It's totally fine. The rest is becoming urgent. So let's get to it. Well, or get sidetracked by an avalanche of carrots. There were a lot of carrots in the box, and I'd need some for the goulash. If I'm already peeling and chopping, I like to take care of as much as possible. Some would be part of dinner, the rest would be dried for dog food and soups. I also added a container to the fridge for easier meals the next days. A friend had sent some chili varieties we weren't growing yet, so I saved the seeds, then added them to dinner. Goulash benefits from some heat, so these arrived in the mail at the perfect time. Thanks, my friend. Slowly simmered soups and stews are a favorite in the colder month. With a two-plate stove, this means some planning. I start these while I make lunch, then simmer them until dinner. Block is pink because we included beets in the mixture we dried. I set a timer to check and stir and went about my day. So long and thanks for being here. If you want to help me make these videos, go to rootsandcalluses.com support. Prefer reading? Buy my novels to support me instead.